when a furious gorilla adamantly denied access to anyone. The sanctuary staff grew deeply concerned. However, their astonishment and shock reached new heights when they examined his hand. Bobo, who had come to Mafu Primate Sanctuary at the tender age of two, had already endured significant hardships in his early life. He was born in the wild and had a typical upbringing until tragedy struck. Poachers invaded his habitat and forcibly separated him from his mother. Leaving Bobo as a helpless orphan. Too young to care for himself and manage the tasks his mother had once handled. The sanctuary's dedicated team discovered him and provided him with a safe haven among other young gorillas who had faced similar ordeals. As time passed. Bobo matured and eventually assumed the role of the Pax Alpha. He grew substantially in size. Becoming robust and muscular. Dwarfing all other gorillas in the sanctuary. His immense stature deterred any thought of poachers attempting to harm him. Fortunately. The staff at the South African sanctuary held a deep affection for Bobo. Just as they did for every other creature in their care. Over the years. The sanctuary had rescued and protected more than 300 apes and monkeys. Whether they required rehoming due to poaching or assistance for injuries. Alyssa, a woman with the privilege of raising and nurturing Bobo, played a pivotal role in his development into a formidable and wise gorilla. Her profound familiarity with Bobo stemmed from the countless hours she had spent with him, allowing her to discern his idiosyncrasies, gauge his emotional state, and distinguish between his moments of contentment and those of anger, signaling his readiness to unleash his formidable power. Consequently, Alyssa often proved to be the only one capable of establishing a connection with him. Bobo and Alyssa had forged an extraordinary bond, akin to a mother and son connection. Even as Bobo grew and began to overshadow the petite sanctuary worker, their love and respect for each other endured. At an impressive 300 pounds with a strikingly large and imposing presence, one might expect Bobo to exhibit an angry and aggressive demeanor. While he was certainly capable of asserting his authority among the other gorillas when necessary, there was an underlying sweetness to his nature. He frequently exhibited this gentler side to select apes within the sanctuary and even some of the staff. The sight of such a massive creature being tender and affectionate was always a curious one. Yet. Whenever other male gorillas dared to challenge Bobo's position as the alpha of the group, he could swiftly transition to his violent and dominant persona. For instance, when two younger males named Kibu and McCain attempted to challenge Bobo's authority, a fierce altercation ensued. Although Alyssa and the keepers eventually managed to separate the three animals, the confrontation did not bode well for the aspiring challengers leaving Bobo securely in his position as the group's alpha. However, one day, Alyssa noticed a change in Bobo's behavior that raised concerns. He had previously roamed his enclosure, engaging with various stimulation items and taking an active interest in the activities of both the staff and other apes. But recently, he had taken to hiding in the tall grass and isolating himself. Bobo seemed physically and mentally distant. As though he were preoccupied and wished to be elsewhere. This shift in his behavior set off alarm bells for Alyssa. Prompting her to closely monitor Bobo to unravel the mystery behind his unusual demeanor. Soon. Alyssa realized that Bobo's frequent trips to the long grass weren't about hiding himself. He was using it as a concealed location for something else. Gorillas. In addition to their immense strength and power, are intelligent and emotional beings capable of harboring their own secrets. Bobo was determined to keep his hidden agenda under wraps. And there was no straightforward way for anyone to uncover it without risking their safety. Walking into his enclosure and investigating would be a perilous endeavor. With this in mind, Alyssa devised a clever plan. She waited for feeding time and served Bobo his meal inside his cage. 
the massive gorilla happily entered and settled down to eat. Unaware that Alyssa had shut the cage door behind him. Temporarily confining him. This action allowed Alyssa to enter Bobo's enclosure safely. Bobo gave her only a passing glance. More engrossed in his food. Alyssa cautiously made her way through the long grass. Her eyes peeled for anything suspicious. As she approached the spot where Bobo had been acting strangely. She was taken aback to find absolutely nothing out of the ordinary. Aside from some flattened grass where he had been sitting. Alyssa breathed a sigh of relief. As her initial concern was that Bobo had acquired something potentially dangerous to both himself and her. What Alyssa hadn't realized was that Bobo hadn't hidden an object in the grass. Instead, he carried this mysterious item with him at all times. It was only when she noticed him holding something in his hands, studying it intently, that she understood she had been deceived by the gorilla. This discovery fueled her determination to uncover the nature of the object Bobo held. The challenge lay in the fact that whenever she or anyone else attempted to get close enough to see what Bobo was concealing, he would become evasive and guarded, making it difficult to discern the nature of his hidden possession. Whenever someone attempted to approach Bobo and discover his secret, he would become irate and agitated, darting off to seek refuge in a more secluded spot. He consistently created distance between himself and anyone who might attempt to unveil the hidden mystery clutched within his massive hands. Naturally, nobody wanted to provoke Bobo, as they had all witnessed his ferocity and violence. Even some of the other gorillas sensed that Bobo was harboring something intriguing and began showing a keen interest in whatever he was guarding. Bobo would react with loud screams and aggressive displays to drive them away whenever they dared to approach. It appeared that the secret would remain elusive to all. Nevertheless, there was always one person who could establish a somewhat closer connection with Bobo than anyone else, Alyssa. After numerous unsuccessful attempts, Alyssa finally managed to get near enough to glimpse what Bobo held in his hands. What she saw left her in disbelief. Her mouth agape. It wasn't a mere object or a cherished treat he was keeping to himself. It was something utterly unexpected and unconventional. In Bobo's hands, there was a tiny animal. Initially, Alyssa thought it resembled a rodent. Possibly a mouse or a rat. However, upon closer examination through binoculars, the truth became apparent. The small creature was a galago, a type of primate that the sanctuary rarely cared for. It had seemingly wandered into Bobo's enclosure from the surrounding forest. Astonishingly, Bobo had discovered it and taken it under his care, treating it like a pet. He poked at it, gently stroked it, and even engaged in playful interactions with the tiny galago. The contrast in size was astounding. Yet the diminutive primate appeared entirely at ease with the colossal gorilla that had become its unlikely caretaker. The galago that Bobo had taken in as his unconventional companion seemed to enjoy its time with the gorilla. Occasionally hopping into the long grass. Exploring. And running around. Yet it consistently returned to Bobo as if it had developed a deep affection for being in his presence. Galagos are known for their nocturnal habits and hunting, leading Alyssa to wonder whether the tiny creature would venture away during the nights. However, her astonishment grew when she discovered that Bobo was sharing his food with the Galago and even taking on the role of feeding this diminutive primate himself. The other gorillas in the sanctuary were equally astounded and intrigued by this unusual relationship. But Bobo was adamant about maintaining a safe distance between them and his newfound companion. Despite his formidable size and strength, it seemed that the love and care Alyssa had provided to him during his upbringing had now found a unique outlet in his affection for this tiny and highly unusual little Galago friend. This extraordinary tale showcases the capacity of animals, regardless of their size or species to form unexpected bonds and connections. 
Have you ever come across a story as remarkable as this? Where a massive animal befriends a small and endearing creature. We always appreciate hearing your thoughts and opinions. So please share them in the comments section below. This snow leopard should stay by the side of a dog. As clever as a kitten. What happened? You know. The relationship between these two animals is predator and prey. But why can this snow leopard live in harmony with dogs? Is there any unknown secret behind this? Let's take a look at it together. In the natural state, animals with congenital disabilities can hardly survive. Especially in the wild. Mothers of big cats such as lions. Tigers and leopards will give up their disabled or unhealthy cubs. Many people find it difficult to understand why animals give up their children so cruelly. In fact, this behavior of animals may be to better continue high-quality genes. If their babies are sick or unsound. Under the competition of the law of the jungle in nature. Helpless mothers will probably reluctantly give up them. In foreign countries. A young snow leopard has deformed its front legs due to natural defects. This disease makes its legs and feet very ineffective. And it is difficult to walk normally. Because of this. It is instinctively thought by the snow leopard mother that it is incompetent for challenging wildlife. So it was brutally thrown into the wild by its mother when it was born. In this case. The young snow leopard faces only death. Fortunately, the poor little snow leopard happened to meet the patrol members who were working in the field, after rescuers rescued him. They named it Luga. Because Luga had no family or companions. The staff found a dog named Garfield in order not to let it grow up alone. Garfield had just given birth to a cub. And the staff hoped Garfield could take care of Luga. They persuaded Garfield's owner to let Garfield raise Luga. A little snow leopard. As soon as Garfield saw Luga. It touched the little snow leopard with his warm body language. It kept kissing and hugging the little snow leopard to express its love for Luga. Enthusiastic Garfield warms lonely Luga with its love. Luga quickly adapts to the new life and new environment. And smoothly integrates into the dog family. It has also become good friends with Garfield's children, who play and live together under the careful care of rescuers every day. Garfield takes good care of Luga. No matter what is delicious or fun, it will always think of Luga at the first time and give it priority. In this way, under Garfield's care, Luga grew up healthily and happily. However, the good times didn't last long. Garfield's master had to leave for a period of time because of his work. And Garfield and his children also needed to leave with his master. After the Garfield family left, Luga missed them all the time. And it was very uncomfortable when it was lonely. It circled the park every day. Trying to find the Garfield family. After a period of time, the Garfield family and its owner came back. And Luga had grown up a lot at this time. Everyone was not sure whether they could still recognize each other. But the warm facts proved that the relationship between Garfield and Luga transcended everything. As soon as Garfield appeared, Luga immediately ran towards it and fell into Garfield's arms. As if telling his grievances, the two animals kissed and bit together. Which may be the way they expressed their thoughts. Because dogs grow much faster than snow leopards. Garfield's children are much bigger. Much bigger than Luga. Puppies even start to take care of Luga as their own children like mothers. They can see Garfield's family taking care of Luga gently at any time. This picture is really loving. At this time. They are no longer childhood playmates. But real family members. In fact. It is not uncommon to live in a different population like Luga. But it is a bit unusual for a golden retriever to bring a far eastern leopard cub. Because this species is extremely endangered. 
Only 19 to 26 Far Eastern Leopards live in the wild in Russia. In a zoo called Vladivostok in Vladivostok, Russia. A Far Eastern Leopard baby was born. But unlike other leopard babies, it failed to grow up under the care of its mother. Because its mother's postpartum emotional regulation problem could not be solved, which threatened her three babies one after another. The zoo decided to separate the mother and son for the safety of the newborn baby. But it was difficult for such a small far eastern leopard to survive without the care of its mother. So the zoo staff thought of a case of cross foster care. Which might be used to keep the cub alive. After thousands of choices from the staff. Tessa. A dog mother who had just given birth stood out and successfully became the foster mother of the Far Eastern Leopard baby. At first, the staff were still worried about whether Tessa could accept this baby Far Eastern Leopard, which is completely different from herself. After all, Tessa still needs to raise four cubs of her own. If she adds a strange cub, it is very likely that Tessa will be overwhelmed. But to everyone's surprise, Tessa not only didn't dislike the baby leopard, but even completely accepted the baby leopard. Tessa, a great and selfless dog mother, gave her maternal love to the cub who was born without a mother. Perhaps aware of the difference between the Far Eastern leopard baby and itself. Tessa, the new adoptive mother, is particularly attentive to this special baby, and is the first to feed it when feeding so she is more careful than her own mother. Of course. The dog babies are also very unconvinced. And they are about to squeeze forward to grab milk. As if to say, Mom, why are you like this? We are your own sons. We are also hungry. Whenever this happens, Tessa will gently lick the crying puppies with her tongue. As if to appease them. Children are good. Let the leopard brother eat first. It is too poor. After waiting for the far eastern leopard cub to eat and drink enough, Tessa did not forget to help the cub massage his abdomen intimately, so as to promote its digestion and excretion. The little baby naturally feels the full love of his adoptive mother. Every time he eats milk, he will be shuffled when couples spend time around his adoptive mother and play for a while. This kind of interaction is also super loving. Of course. The zookeepers also worked hard with Tessa to raise this far eastern leopard cub. When Tessa was busy taking care of her cub, they would feed her special formula milk. Because of glucose and other nutritious additives, the cub doubled its weight and length in just three weeks, and slowly began to try to add rabbit meat and other complementary foods to it under the careful care of Tessa and the breeders. This far eastern leopard baby has become a healthy and strong leopard. But as an adult, it has not forgotten the kindness of its adoptive mother. Whenever it sees Tessa, it always interacts with it very excitedly, and never does anything to harm Tessa. Tessa still loves this child, who is much older than itself, and lets it play coquetry and roll around her. Such a loving picture moves countless people. And no one can think that different species can have such close feelings. In fact, even if animals cross species, there will be sincere emotions. And these emotions are often more precious, rare and unbreakable. Therefore, we human beings should know how to protect these animals and respect and cherish their lives and emotions. I hope that in the days to come, human beings can establish friendly relations with animals and live in harmony on this beautiful planet.